Welcome to episode three of Guest Sessions. It's been a bit of a long wait since the last episode where myself and Jim Wilson were out, but finally managed to get a date that myself and Harry, who's gonna be joining me for this guest session, was available. And we've traveled right up north. Very far. Uh, I think we both got nosebleeds on the journey here, but we finally arrived and we are at the beautiful Waynestones Pool, which belongs to our good friend and Fox colleague, Mark Pitchers. And our first impressions haven't arrived. It's stunning. It's absolutely beautiful. I mean, I have been here a few times, but I've never fished it. Really gagging to get going, but we got the, you know, you got the North Yorkshire moors in the background. It's absolutely picturesque. Awesome. The, the weather's lovely for the north of England. We're now into well into September. We've got sort of 15 degrees uh, forecast for the next couple of days. Uh, slightly cold north. Uh, northwesterly wind but it's not really hitting the water at the moment so it's actually looking pretty good. Uh, we've seen a couple of fish on our first kind of first part of the lake we've got to. Uh, we're now going to go and do a lap and uh, yeah we're going to have to come up with a way of deciding who gets first pick of swims. Fight. Oh very aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was a good old-fashioned coin toss. <laughs> right, let's go let's have a look. Yeah. <laughs> To be fair, Harry always is usually. He's the coin tosser <laughs> I've ever seen. He's probably the best tosser you've been out with, yeah. but that's cool. He I, won't lose. Yeah. Well, he doesn't have to lose. I'm not going to lose. I, I hope he wins. Okay. You right. ready? I, so and I'm I've got an excuse. He's going to flip, right. land. Go on. Yeah. Ready? You ready? Yeah. Heads. Well, that's a great toss. <laughs> it's a, a tail. tail. She's lost. I said he always I'll go. Be. I'll go in there because H hasn't got a barra anyway, so it's easier for him to fish closer to the car. That's how nice I am. <laughs> yeah, cheers. <laughs> you'll, you'll catch first in there, hundred percent. You'll be fishing before I even get my gear round. Hey, I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm catching plenty. Time. Right, let's do it. Um, where's my two pounds? <laughs> 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 yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I could, I, I, I could actually buy that bit of land with that. Right, so I've managed to get my two rods out. I'm in a swim called The View, and it is absolutely stunning from here. You can, uh, you can look over the moors in the background. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. And um, yeah, there are a few fish about. They've been sort of milling about. When I had a bit of a flick around just to try and find some spots with a light lead, um, they did seem to go to ground a little bit more. I didn't, I haven't seen as many since then, but I have still seen a few. Um, I put my two rods out that just, um, yeah, really sort of subtle baiting. I haven't done um, too much to sort of disturb the swim as much as possible. I've got two uh, 10 mil bottom baits on one rod and I've got 40 mil bottom bait on the other rod. And they're both pace strapped. And the reason that I've gone for bottom baits um, and kind of match the hatch is, you know, there, there is quite a lot of, um, I guess, stock fish in here. And I'm thinking that the older, more sort of established, wiser fish that have been fished for for years and years and years might be a bit more susceptible to a matching bottom bait, whilst the little ones might be a bit more keen on the bright stuff. So. I want to try and avoid the little ones. I, I might catch one, I don't know, but the, uh, the, the bottom baits are out there with the, uh, with the intention of getting uh, amongst some of the better ones. So we'll see. I've picked a swim which Mark calls Pipe Point. It's got a lot of water in front of it. It's in the wider half of the lake. Um, and yeah, I've just had a little bit of a flick around. I found one spot with a marker float and I'm just in the process of threading on some rig tubing because the rules here state you have to use rig tubing and I wasn't that prepared, so I'm having to do that. Um, so I'm just in the process of getting that one rod sorted. Uh, I haven't decided yet what I'm gonna do with my other rod. I'm, I, there's a nice island to my left and I think I'm gonna have a look around that once this first rod's out. But it's looking really good. Like I say, I'm just gonna crack on, re-rig my rods up with this tubing. Uh, get some rigs tied up and uh, then set about getting a bit of bait in for the evening because uh, this time of year the nights soon, soon draw in. So 
so I've actually just had a move. Um, yes, it's dark and I'm having to do this, yeah, all in the dark all over again, but it just didn't feel right down there. Um, it's a lot shallower water and I think um, the fish have sort of pushed out um, this evening. Maybe a little bit of extra disturbance from me helped that. Um, but this end of the lake is deeper. Mark tells me that it's a better nighttime area. So maybe I made a bit of a mistake going in there at the start, but I'm here now, so we'll give it a go. See what happens. Let's hope a change of, uh, change of spot brings a change of luck. Right, so that is it. It's always a little bit traumatic trying to get the rods out when you've had a move sort of just at the last part of the day, but rods are out. Crossing my fingers again, and uh, yeah, let's hope the night brings something or uh, first thing in the morning. So the move has paid off and I'm playing one. It's actually been stuck in the weed for a bit and it's right. Oh, it's a nice little, uh, nice scaly one. One of, uh, one of Mark's babies. It's deciding to beach itself rather strangely. But yeah, very welcome. I've probably, well, I don't know what time it is. I reckon it's about two o'clock. And I'll have, yeah, definitely one of Mark's little, uh, little protégés. Uh, lovely. Off the mark, my furthest ever North Carp. Awesome. So, off the mark, like I said, the move paid off. This is uh, one of Mark's babies. I think uh, he put them in here maybe not even, not even two years ago at about two pound. And uh, to see it now at just under 12 pound shows you the, uh, the potential that some of these fish have got and, uh, and what this lake has got as well. So. Awesome fish, massive shoulders, small, but very cool. Morning update then. So, uh Quite an eventful night. Um, I, Harry had a bite about half past two and landed in a lovely uh, small mirror. And then about half past four, I had a bite myself. Unfortunately though, uh, this fish got into the weed um, and I lost it to a hook pull in the weed. It didn't feel a big fish. It was very juddery on the bite uh, when I lifted into it. And uh, yeah, the lead hadn't even ejected on the bite, which goes to suggest that it wasn't a big fish um, at all putting any real force on the on the lead when it when it took off um, and then yeah first lights come this morning I've had a lot of liners there's been fish kicking around the area but uh, no more bites so I've redone the rods um, and yeah whilst uh, whilst there's not lots and lots to report um, there's quite a lot of positives the, the it was quite a cold night last night but the sun's up early this morning it's beating down on the water and I think that's going to get the fish out, up and about moving um, and I think that's going to present myself and Harry some good stalking opportunities today hopefully. Um, you can only fish from the designated swims on this lake but they're very well positioned um, and quite well overgrown really so they, they do offer good stalking potential. Um, 
So yes, yeah, that would be quite an interesting day. I think it's going to be a full on day. It's not one of them kind of days where we're going to be able to sit back and and uh, sit over a baited area waiting for them to come along. We're going to have to sort of bring it to them a bit, I think. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. It should be should be good, a bit different to my normal fishing, sort of going around chasing the fish a bit. So yeah, um, going to probably give it about another hour. It's about 7.30 at the minute, about another hour. Um, give H a call and then yeah, formulate a plan of attack to see how we're going to go about um, doing this stalking approach for the day. Yeah, I'm pleased that I'm pleased that I've got off the mark, but I know that there are a lot more, um, a lot more bigger fish in here, and I'm kind of hoping for uh, for one of those. It's it's really high pressure at the moment, and the and the fish definitely aren't hard on the feed. So I think the main chance for today is sort of creating little opportunities potentially in the edge potentially further up the island margin we'll see i'm going to try a few different things um, wait for the sun to get out a little bit more and then the fish should start moving about and i should start to see um, a little bit more activity but i'm still getting the odd liner on my rod so we'll give it another hour or so and then um, then perhaps have a rethink as to where the next bite's going to come from Marks did say that there's a good chance sort of mid-morning out in open water so we've given it to that bite time nothing's happened so I've reeled in now I'm going to take one rod and I'm going to do a bit of stalking for a few hours down in that corner I had a little walk down there a little while ago and there is the odd clip and little bubble coming up where I put those pellets last night so I'm hoping that there's one or two fish creeping into that margin so I'm going to just literally lower a little wafter rig little PVA bag of pellets that's all nothing else just lower it down sit back and hope that one of these Wainstones uh, big uns creeps into the edge and snuffles my little hook bait. Proper exciting fishing. I've moved just with one rod down into a swim called Corn Beef Corner. You'll have to ask Mark Pitchers why he's named it that swim, I don't ask him. Um, yeah, I've been fishing for a couple of hours down here. Um, there was a, just a few plumes of bubbles hit the surface on a, on a spot I'd put a few pellets on last night. And uh, yeah, so I lowered a, just a PVA bag down on it with, a, with a, the little wafter presentation that I've got on this rod. It's a, a reverse combi and uh, yeah, it's just rattled off. Got to give it a bit because there's a lot of weed out in front of here. Oh, it looks, looks good and that's a 20 pounder. Just gotta give it some. It's not not really one for, for play. <laughs> yeah, right, hey? That's a nice fish, mate. Looks good, mate. Yeah, that is a, a nice fish. A lot of weed, but just keeping it moving, it's going. I never thought it was gonna happen. Oh, it's proper exciting. Just little pinpricks, little bubbles over the rig, odd little line twitch and that, and then it's just rattled off. Come on, give it that. Go. Come on. Here we go. Come on. I'm not. Go on. There we yeah. go. That is a oh, oh. Get it in. <laughs> that is a oh, decent fish, fish mate. mate. That's a good 20. That's a good 20. Well done. Wicked. Oh, brilliant. oh, finally. Is there a better way than doing a bit of stalking in the edge that close in? Fantastic. Boom. Oh, my heart's beating like Mate, a million miles an hour. Well, I think you've got a decent, decent 20. I'm be, saying 27. It's got to be 28, isn't it? It feels heavy. Uh, uh, it's, actually, it's actually bigger. Go on. 30 pounds. What? 30, 30 pound 10, I'll give you. 30 right. pound 10. <laughs> yes, awesome. mate. Naughty Boom. 30. That's oh. mega. Well, I didn't think it was that big. How quickly a session can change. It has <sighs> been hard work. I've literally just been waiting for the night. Yeah, but, well, worth doing that stalking anyway. 30 pound 10. Lovely Waynestones Paul Mirror Cup, stalked out the edge, just a rod length out. Proper exciting, uh, proper buzz. Quite a frantic quick scrap because of, the, because of the weed in the swim, but yeah, absolute belter. And I've gone from being pretty low because the day's gone by without action to now on a massive high and looking forward to tonight, getting the rods back out on the bait and hopeful that myself and Harry can get a few more of these awesome Waynestones Cup. 
plenty of fight left in it. Beautiful. So I've just uh, put back that scraper 30 and I thought before I put the rod back out, it's a good opportunity just to talk you through the rig because it is a little bit different to the rig uh, that I fished last night over my baited spots in my, in my swim. Very similar principle, but uh, one change, uh, significant change that I've made, and that's because of the lake bed that I'm fishing over where I'm stalking in the corner. So the rig I was using on my baited area, it's really hard, uh, firm clay on that spot, or both of those spots. So I'm using fluorocarbon straight through as a, as a hook link with a D rig, and then a balanced hook bait. Where I've, where I've been stalking, there's a bit of uh, softer bottom, a bit of weed on the bottom. So I wanted to have the suppleness of a coated braid, so I've got the semi-stiff Camatex, but I still wanted that D-rig um, hook presentation that I really like when I'm using a critically balanced hook bait. So I've taken uh, a short section of rigidity, created a D-rig, and then I've used uh, all bright knot to attach the coated braid to the stiff mono, and then I put a big blob of putty over the knot. Now this putty helps to protect the knot, but also it helps to set the hook uh, and turn the hook when a fish picks up the rig. So the, the rig will sit on the bottom like so, wafting like that. So the hook's in the perfect position like a claw waiting to grab hold. When it goes into the mouth, as it tries to come out this, this way, as you can see, it just wants to turn the hook. It's just wanting to pull down and turn that hook into that bottom lip. And uh, yeah, it's like, call it a dropper or, what, or whatever. It just helps with that anti-eject property and that hooking potential. Little Northern special wafter for the hook bait and all I did was attach a small PVA bag of pellets and lowered it onto some bait that I'd put on that spot yesterday. I noticed a bit of fizzing so I dropped the rod on it and a couple of hours later it was away with that beautiful mirror carp. So uh, and then I'm going to go and get the rods back out on the bait for tonight. So get this in position now and who knows might better get another one. Been a bit of a frustrating day, hasn't it? Really, I mean, it, it has. Like the fish have just pretty much just sat and done pretty much nothing on the surface. They have, they've been fishing my corner pretty much all day, but they've just been up on the surface, and it's eight foot um, water below them. You know, can't float fish, can't can't fish zigs. So you just got to kind of wait for your opportunities to present themselves, and um, yeah, hopefully. I think I think they will present themselves tonight. I think we will get bites tonight for sure. When that sun goes down, that should uh, hopefully flick a switch and, uh, and maybe we'll catch a few more. Yeah, I mean they're being the swimming round of like they're using a lot of energy, and you'd like to think with all the swimming they're doing and the jumping that they're going to need to eat something. Naively, yesterday I thought I'd try and fish for a bit of a hit of carp, but mm. yeah, the weather conditions have uh, kind of stopped that. Plan. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm confident for us both tonight. I, I think, I, I think by morning there'll be a couple more fish to report. Yeah, definitely. definitely. See how it goes. If all else fails, pictures is bringing us fish and chips later. So at least we're going to enjoy a nice meal. Yeah. Sixteen pound, beautiful little mirror cup. Unfortunately, uh, Brad wasn't awake to get the bite, even though I was shouting him like mad. He is entitled to a bit of sleep, bless him. But uh, yeah, sixteen pound, seven ounces. Came on uh, my right hand rod over the bait. So uh, yeah, one fish finally decided to get his head down on that baited area, despite the high pressure conditions. 
I think this session would actually get better if we were staying longer, but we've got to go in a few hours. So, so I'm not sure whether we'll get another chance or not. I think Harry's going to go and do a bit of stalking for the last couple of hours of this morning. Try and uh, winkle one out, because I think he's had a quiet night over in his swim. Lovely dark little mirror though, beautiful. Really happy with that. Happy days. Well, sadly, that's the end of our 48 hour session here at Waynestones Pool. We've got a two and three quarter hour drive back to my house and then Harry's got another hour or so back to his house. So, uh, yep, unfortunately, we've had to call time on it. We've had a fantastic time here, uh, getting a glimpse of what everybody's going to expect when they come when the lake opens in 2020. Um, it's been a brilliant trip, slightly frustrating at times because the fish haven't uh, played ball with the weather conditions that we've been faced with. Uh, but still enjoyable nonetheless. Thanks, Harry, for spending the last couple of nights with me. It's no been a worries. Good trip. Hopefully, uh, you'll be able to get back up here sometime in the future as well. I'd very much, very much enjoy that, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll finish getting the rest of the gear in the van and uh, head back to the warm climate of the south. <laughs> yeah, I think it's about <laughs> 10 degrees warmer up down there, so let's go.